Getty Images. Oh. So uh, Tim Barry from Holistic Web Presence here. Uh, this morning I'm going to be talking about copying images on the internet and how to keep yourself out of trouble and how to get yourself into trouble and just kind of things that kind of go on and things that people don't commonly understand. And one of the things that's come up a lot lately is it would appear, and I only know this indirectly, but it would appear that Getty Images in particular, and other companies do this as well, are proactively going after other companies, businesses that have, or companies that have a website. And what they will have done is, with working with their developer, they would have had a whole bunch of images added to their website. Now, in most cases, most people do things quite legitimately, but sometimes an image can be obtained from somewhere, and that image turns out to have originally come from another source. For example, Getty Images are a company that sell images. Now, if it turns out that you have a Getty image on your website, and in, for a lot of companies, you know, they'll have multiple websites and tons of pages, they won't even know that they've got that image on their website because it's typically been added as a feature, something to do with some kind of point they're making, and it's a generic image of something. Um, but the original source was Getty Images. What Getty Images are doing, they have uh, tools that they can use, any company has tools that they can use on the internet, to search for instances of images of theirs, or what appears to be theirs, and then go after the company that's published that, if they don't have a license to actually publish that image. Now, under normal circumstances, something that isn't commonly well understood by people that aren't in the online marketing in the online marketing world is that what you want when you publish content on the internet you want people to copy it and repost it and what you want in return for that is a link back to reference you and that's how you become more popular and that's how you rank the more people use your content and point back to the original source, whether that's an image or written content, then that's goodness for you. Now, most online companies get that and see that as a benefit. So as a practice, taking an image from somewhere on the internet or a video or embedding a video from somewhere from YouTube or um, writing some content and then talking about that subject and then sending a link back, here's the original source or here's an example, here's where this original information come from and then talking more about that subject is a common practice and it's good for everybody. Now in some instances companies will take an image from another company and repost it and not do a good job of doing that, referencing the original source. What will happen is the company that created the original image will just contact the new company that's reposted their content and just ask for them to stop doing it. A cease and desist is the term that you would use. Please take down the images, these are our images, don't use them. Or what they will do if they're a bit smarter from an internet point of view is they'll say, well you can use the image but please reference back and uh, refer to us as the original source and the originator of this co content. When, when they're smarter that's what they're going to do because that benefits them and the link that is sent back helps them to rank and that's part of how the search engines, Google, decide whether a particular website is going to rank is how many other places have actually used that content, how much buzz has the original content created. Now that applies to images. Now Getty images are a little bit different in as much as an attorney I work with is incorporation attorney that's in Orange County that is run by Andy Gale and he has several clients where he he has instances where Getty Images have sent them a letter and this is what they do and this is where things get really um, in my opinion dodgy and not a good practice and it crosses the line from just a sensible way of going about things to what is described on the internet and there's a lot of buzz if you do a search on Getty Images extortion you will see quite a few commentary on this which is what they do is instead of just saying look, you're using um, one of our images, please either pay for it or take it down. Instead of just doing that, which is classic cease and desist, they're saying they're claiming damages up front, and they're saying, you have published our content, you owe us um, X thousand dollars, uh, because this has been published for some time, and it's on this website, and we estimate the traffic as this, and therefore you owe us thousands of dollars. Now, what they have is a very legally carefully worded format in those letters that will typically 
frighten the naive into believing, oh, I better just pay it because these people are going to come after me. And if it's successful, I'm going to have to pay the fees. I, I, I've got to hire an attorney and I've got to have all these problems and what a nightmare. And they end up just paying the money. You have to ask. Now, this may be in the realms of conspiracy theory, but it seems to me that a company that publishes images should be making their money on selling the images. But what it would appear to be, is based on the, the, the looking, seeing what I've seen, is that it could be possible that companies like Getty make more money out of going after people with extortion-oriented letters than they do in actually publishing the images in the first place. Because they can frighten people into paying large amounts of money. And I'm talking, you know, several thousand dollars for the use of one image. Now, if they send that out to a hundred companies and just get a percentage of those pay, you've got to ask yourself, how much is that worth as a business as against just selling an image? Images typically, when they're sold online, if you just shop around in different companies like iStock that sell images, and iStock sell Getty images, an image is typically uh, 10 bucks, 20 bucks. So how much is that worth? There's a business model associated with volume there. But how much more is it worth to go after people and frighten them into settling for several thousand dollars in one go? So, if, <laughs> so here's the message. It's probably not a good idea to take an image without understanding the source of that image. In most cases, if you're taking an image from a company, you're reposting it and you're referencing it back to that company. If they're not selling the image, it's just their property. They're unlikely to be concerned about it and they're most likely to just say, if they're not happy with it, ask you to give them a reference or if you haven't, or to ask you to take it down. However, if you take an image that has been for sale somewhere, then you're at risk for getting one of these letters. And I strongly encourage you, because I'm not an attorney, all of this is just my opinion as an online marketer. You're much better off if you're in any doubt consulting an attorney. I'd recommend, I work with Andy Gale, an incorporation attorney in Orange County. And the reason, I'm not actually in Orange County. The reason I work with him is that I have a number of clients in Orange County. And he has helped me understand this model of when it's appropriate to publish content on the internet and the legal ramifications of that. I strongly encourage you to contact an attorney and I'm sure Andy Gale will be more than happy to help you if you have those sorts of issues. So in conclusion, just understand that if you publish, if anybody publishes any content online, whether it's a video, whether it's a image or uh, written content, anybody that's at all savvy on the internet can copy that. Anybody can copy an image, um, anybody can uh, download a video it's very hard to protect for that. I, I can pretty much get anything I want. That doesn't make it right, but there is a good practice as to how you should do that, and that's usually just referencing the source. But if you're in doubt, then make sure that you talk to an attorney and you understand how you might stand with regard to any content that you, that you, you copy. We do it all the time. We'll write an article about another business, and we'll reference them, and we'll include some images off their website. And it's all goodness, because at the end of the day, all we're doing is promoting it. I really don't like this practice of sending these extortion letters, because they're really geared to intimidating the naive business person into settling out of court because of fear of potential court costs. I just don't, personally, I just don't think that's a very good practice. I just wish companies like Getty Image would just do good practice, cease and desist. If they find somebody that they're not convinced has actually paid for an image, then in my opinion, what they should be doing is instead of sending these horrific letters that frighten people, asking for a settlement of thousands of dollars out of court, they should just say, look, you're using one of our images, please pay for it or take it down. That would be, in my opinion, a good, reasonable thing to do. But there you go. That's just my opinion. So, there are some things that you can do to protect your images, and in subsequent videos in this series, I'll be talking about how to make use of images in a positive way. If you're concerned about somebody copying your image and you're not getting reference to that and you don't have a legal army to go after them, what can you do to protect your own content and what's a good practice for doing that? Cool. I hope uh, you get something out of this video.